You know why I like this lesson so much? It's because it's bringing you one step closer to greatness. And you know what? Greatness ain't so bad. We're going to look at expressing patterns. And the main thing we're going to look at is graphing. And how these expressions all relate to graphing. So let's look at our few definitions. We've got linear relation. And look closely at linear relations. It's got the word line in it. So anytime you have a bunch of dots that can connect to make a straight line, you've got yourself a linear relation. Then we have coordinate. And it says two numbers that are separated by a comma. So let's say you have, write two and five and put them in brackets. You have to put the brackets. Now you've got coordinates and we'll see what that looks like in a bit. We have an example, like here we have a coordinate, which we just wrote down. And the first number is called the X. Write it down over here. And the second number is called the Y. And what are we talking about? We're talking about these um, horizontal and vertical line here. The horizontal one, remember this, memorize it. It's called the X axis. It's not called the X line, it's called the X axis. And the vertical one is going to be called the Y axis. Not the Y line, but the Y axis. And just like X comes before Y in the alphabet, so does the order here. It's very um, linear in that sense. X comes first and Y comes second. Now let's plot some points. What I recommend you do is you put X, Y below all of these. Put your X's and your Y's. It's not hard. It's simple. Just write X, Y. And then you look at the first one. We have the first coordinate is 3, 7. So before we start, let's put our number line in place. Let's put all these ticks over here. And write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 0. And then on the vertical one, go ahead and label it. We're going to label it like this. And we're going to go from 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, let's go all the way to 11. 11, and here we have 10. Now what you do is you look at X. It says X is 3, so go to X3. Make a mark of some sort. And then find where Y is 7. Y is the vertical one, so we'll make a mark over here at 7. And then where the two points meet is where your coordinate will go. And that's going to be right here. Now you don't always have to make these marks. You can sort of visualize it. But at the beginning you may need to make these marks, and that is fine. I'm going to visualize the rest. 4 and 9. X is 4. So X is 4 here. And Y is 9 here. And where, where they meet will be right there. See, 4 and 9. Then we'll move on to 5 and 11. We'll go 5 is here. 11 is up there. Where they meet will be right there. Now look what we have here. We have three coordinates. And if we connect these coordinates with a line, it connects perfectly to make what? A linear relation. So do the points make a linear relation? Yes. Why? Because simple. It makes a straight line. I'm going to take you back in time to a book you may have read called Hop on Pop. And I want to read a segment of the book to you and tell you what this has to do with the algebra we're doing. Um, follow along with me. Up, pup, pup is up. Cup, pup, pup in cup. Pup, cup, cup on pup. And then it moves on to the next part. It says CB3. Now we see three. Three tree. Three fish in a tree. Fish in a tree? How can that be? What does this have to do with anything? Let me show you. It says there is a pup in a cup. So we can write one pup in a cup. But the second paragraph says there are three fish in a tree. So we can write three fish in tree. Pretty interesting uh, uh, imagination Dr. Zeus has. Likes to play with kids' minds a little bit. And uh, we created a pattern here. So if we have a pup in a cup and three fish in a tree, what if we had two pups? How many fish then would we have in, in a tree? We'd have another three. See, for every pup you put inside of a cup, that'd be a mean thing to do. But say you got a really big cup. You got to put three fish in tree. You got another pup, you got to get another three fish. So now we're going to look at four methods to describe this. And I'm going to go through them one at a time. So I'm going to screen this a little bit. And I'm going to start with method one. We have ourselves uh, ourselves a pattern. And we are going to express the pattern because that's the name of the lesson, expressing patterns. 
And so the first way we can express it is with a table of values. We can write pup over here. And we can write fish. Isn't that what we're comparing? But let's write a variable for pup. How about p? And instead of fish, let's write f. Now we've got pups and fish. And we have one pup for three fish. So two would get you six and three would get you nine fish. Three pups gets you nine fish. And we can take this data and make a table of values. We can write one comma three. We can write two comma six. And here three comma nine. Was that hard? It's not hard. But I know some of you are thinking, Mr. Mellum, you said the first number is the X number and we don't have X. We have P and F. Well, you know what? You could think of this as the X and you could think of this as the Y. So pup will go on the X axis and fish will go on the Y. Now we just have to plot the points. So you know what I'm going to do here? I've got this. I don't know why this is sitting there. But let's go ahead and plot these points. We have 1, 3. And before we do that, we've got to make our number line. So we'll write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we go up. we got 2. we got all the way go to 9. So we can go, um, here's 0. Put 0 there. And then we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. I'm running out of space here. Eight. That's better. So now let's plot it. We have one, three. So we'll go one, three. That's over here. That's our first coordinate. And then we got two, six. So two, six goes here. And three, nine goes up there. Up right here. Now ask yourself first, is it linear? Well, let's see here. Connect the dots. And indeed, it is linear. So we have a linear relation. But now we need to describe this pattern using words. And so, what's the pattern here? Do you notice any pattern between 1 and 3, 2 and 6, 3 and 9? Go this way. Go this way. Go this way. You see how we're timesing by 3 every time? Times by 3. Times by 3. So, we have 3 times more fish than pups. So, we could say start at, and you know what? I'm going to make this faster, so I'm going to type it out. I'm going to say, um, start, is that big enough for you? Can you see that? How about that? Start at 1, 4, 1, 3. And then what do we have here? We have, we have three times more fish than pups. That's sort of the pattern that we've got here. Start at 1, 3, and then um, we have three times more fish than pups. Uh, we can also say increase the number of pups by one. How about that? Increase the number of fish by three. That's a pretty detailed uh, pattern. I think we got this one down solid. Let's move on to the next part. It says, describe using horizontal and vertical distances on the graph. Here's what I'm talking about. If you go from this point to that point, you had to have moved horizontally one number from one to two, that's one number. So we can write move one horizontal. I'll write horizontal. And then, then you gotta go up. You gotta go up one, two, three. From three to six is three numbers. So we will write and three up, three vertical. That's another way of expressing a pattern. Now we'll move to the fourth way which is um, describing using a relationship. And when I say relationship, I'm talking about let's multiply or add or subtract some numbers. And this is pretty easy to see because we are taking one and multiplying it by three. We're taking two, multiplying it by three. We're taking the pup amount and multiplying it by three. And when we do that, we get the number of fish. So we write equals fish. But Mr. Melham, we don't, we're not supposed to write time sign. You said that in the other video. Right. So then we're going to eliminate the time sign. We're going to put the three first and the P second. And that means they're being multiplied. And that equals F. Done. That's the relationship. And we already answered the last one. Yes, it is linear. Let's do a question like this where we're given the graph and we have to turn this into a table of values. We got to first ask ourselves, what are we comparing? We're comparing age with the allowance. You know, that's a lot of writing here. How about we just write 
Um, we can write, how about, uh, well, they're both A, so how about we just, we can't just write A and A. How about we write X and Y? My X axis has age, and my Y axis is allowance. And I'm going to make it very clear that it is dollars. So I'll write a dollar sign. Now let's uh, rock and roll with this. We've got our first coordinate at 4 and 2. So when the kid is 4 years old, he gets $2. Now if you put a dollar sign in brackets here, you don't really need to put it here. So I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it out. I'll just write 2. Then we're going to move on to 5 years old, and he's going to get $3. And then at six years old, he's going to get $4. And we're going to turn this into ordered pairs. So we'll write 4, 2. We're going to write 5 and 3. And we're going to write 6 and 4. Put them in brackets. If you don't put the brackets, it's wrong. You don't want to get the wrong answer, so do it right. Now what we have is we got to describe the pattern using horizontal and vertical distances. That's not too hard to do. Let's look at this and see what's happening. We move first from this dot to that dot by going one number horizontal. We went from four to five, and then we went one number vertical. We went from two to three. So we've got now move one horizontal. I'll just write that abbreviated, and two vertical, two vertical. Now it says describe using a relationship. And the relationship here, now take a look. We want to go horizontal. We want to go like this. What's the relationship between these numbers? We're not timesing or dividing here. We are subtracting two every time. You minus two from this, you get that. You minus two from here, you get that. So what are we minusing from? This is a variable. It varies all the time this, this year. We're taking X and we're subtracting two from it. And when we do that, we get Y which is his allowance. If you see why, you're, we're talking allowance. That's all. And this, that's our expression. Now let's take a look at the bottom part. It says use substitution to calculate how much the allowance will be when he is 18 years old. Use substitute. Use what? What is that? You know in um, sports, in soccer or basketball, hockey even, when a player gets tired, he's substituted off. You know when your teacher's tired and maybe a little bit ill, a substitute comes in? And a substitution is anytime somebody comes off and, and is replaced by something else. So in this case here, when he is 18 years old, that is X, right? We said X is age. So we're going to take the X out, take it out, and switch it with 18, like that. Then we'll write minus 2 equals Y. And so 18 minus 2 is 16, and that equals Y, and this is dollars. Y is amount of money. Now, that's not too hard to figure out, because if you continued this all the way to 18 years old, and you kept going minus 2 every time, you're going to get $16. And that's essentially what substitution is. Substitution helps you, so get used to substitution once you got yourself your expression, your relationship. Now, what are the key ideas? What did we look at? We looked at a few things. We looked at four different ways of expressing patterns. We looked at the first one, which was a table of values. Table of values. We looked at um, the second way, which was using words. Using words. That's when we had to do stuff like this, where we were like, oh, start at 1, 3, start there, uh, here. And then uh, we have three times more fish than pups. Uh, and we, we described it that way. So that, that was called using words. But there's more. We used horizontal and vertical distances. Horizontal slash vertical distance. Or movement. And then on this graph, you would say, well, to go from here to there, you're going to go one to the right and two up. One to the right, two up. Right? So you would just say that. And the last method, method number four, was, what was method number four? Relationships. Relationships. That's when you got your expression. That's when you go like this and you write x minus 2 equals y. Or you go to this one and you say 3p equals f. That's your relationship. So go ahead, practice some of these, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, substitution is your friend. I'm done. Have a nice day. See you later. Oh! <laughs>